Thank you very much. Thanks for the invitation. So we've just seen that uh, there is growing evidence uh, suggesting that uh, computer tomography and geography could be a non-invasive alternative to transesophageal echocardiography for the evaluation of uh, the left atrial appendage, and particularly if a delayed LAA imaging is performed as part of the imaging protocol. And the Dremencio LAA workflow helps to quickly assess the LAA shaped orientation uh, and helps to select the best device for the percutaneous procedure. So why choosing a CT for the pre-procedural evaluation? Uh, first of all, for the LAA occlusion, we need a good understanding of the LAA anatomy, and you all know that CT provides an excellent spatial resolution. Uh, the CT is always performed in non-sedated patients, so with normal loading condition, and uh, there is currently a very limited irradiation uh, with the new protocols. And although transesophageal echocardiography is currently considered as the gold standard, it is a semi-invasive procedure uh, associated with uh, patient discomfort and a uh, small risk of complication. So in the setting of the pre-procedural planning, uh, the TEE needs to be performed by an experienced uh, cardiologist aware of the needs of the interventionalist. And um, uh, it will be repeated after, during the procedure under GA, which leads to potential different loading condition, which may lead to a, a discordant results. So what are the goals of the pre-procedural CT evaluation? Uh, first of all, we have to, include, to exclude uh, LAA thrombus. Uh, we have to assess the LAA anatomy, uh, measure the landing zone and the ostium, and with the Trimentio software, we can evaluate the best uh, furrow angulation to avoid waste of time and unnecessary construct injection or unnecessary X-ray in the CAT lab. So uh, you can see here the, the CT protocol. So we perform a conventional topogram scoot uh, to localize the heart, followed by a breathhold image acquisition undertaken with a prospective gating between 65 and 85 percent of the RR interval. And as you can see here, during the, the 65 to 85 percent phases, uh, the LAA volume remains relatively constant. And uh, the measurement of the LAA volume, the measurements of the landing zone and the ostium um, should be closer to the true value based on recent publications. And importantly, uh, we repeat imaging covering only the left atrial appendage at 60 seconds after the initial contrast bolus to exclude the presence of a potential thrombus. And this protocol achieves 100% sensitivity and specificity for the LAA thrombus detection relative to the gold standard TEE based on recent publication with a very limited irradiation. So when you launch the, the software uh, on your laptop, you can select the patient and you can display the early and the delayed imaging to rule out a potential thrombus. So what you can do is scrolling the, the data set in the axial plane and uh, compare the early imaging with the late imaging. A thrombus is identified by the presence of a filling, of a filling defect on the initial contrast and imaging, but it has to be confirmed on uh, the delayed imaging. Um, this filling defect on early imaging is very often reported, but most of the time it's related to incomplete mixing of the blood with the contrast uh, related with a slow flow in the LAA in patients with chronic AF. And most of the time, there is no filling defect on the delayed imaging. So you have to be aware of that uh, if you perform a CT. And you can see on this slide uh, an MPR view on the long axis of the LAA neck, and you can clearly see here uh, the filling defect, which is not present on the delayed imaging. And on the left-hand side of the screen, uh, you can see a volume rendering view of uh, the LIA showing the same filling defect. So you have to pay attention of this filling defect also if you look at the LIA anatomy. And I show you here uh, an example of a, a true thrombus we, that you can see here the filling defect on the early imaging and the filling defect is also seen 
in the delayed imaging, and this is the corresponding uh, TE images. In the opposite, what we see most of the time uh, is a filling defect on early uh, imaging, which is not present on delayed imaging, and you have the confirmation once uh, in the CAT lab uh, that there is no thrombus. <coughs> so now you have excluded the thrombus, and you can focus on the LIA anatomy. So you just have to uh, launch the application and click on the, on the automatic button and you obtain directly a, vol a, a volume rendering view of the left atrial appendage and the left atrium and you can make your anatomical classification based, based on these uh, uh, images. You can look at the position of the LIA relative to the left upper pulmonary vein and you can also look at uh, the PV reach. Then uh, you go to the next step uh, with the landing zone and the osteo measurements and you have to, uh, to put two dots, one on the PV ridge and another one next to the, to the circumflex artery uh, exactly as we do uh, when we uh, measure the landing zone on TEE uh, in the CAT lab. And you can, uh, you can measure the landing zone relative to the uh, usual anatomical landmarks and you can uh, also make a measurement of the ostium. So you, you, you get directly uh, all the numbers with the maximum diameter, the minimum diameter, uh, the area and the perimeter. And uh, uh, you can see these double oblique MPR views uh, with two orthogonal planes. And you can have an idea of uh, the potential position of the lobe and the disc on a volume rendering view. Uh, if you wish, you can draw uh, uh, the, the position, the ideal position of the catheter, uh, and you can see him. You can see it in two orthogonal planes. Uh, in the last uh, version released this year, um, you can you can get um, you can measure the angles and you can measure the distance between uh, the red ring and the green ring. Uh, which is very convenient if you're, you plan to, uh, to implant an amulet device. So based on your uh, CT uh, evaluation, you can make a device preselection, and uh, you can get here this uh, internal view on, on the VRT view and this external view. So um, what, what you want to do with, with the amulet device is you want the lobe to fit perfectly uh, to the LIA at the level of the landing zone, and you want the external disc to completely seal the ostium of the LIA. And the last step of uh, the CT uh, preprocedural -pre planning is the evaluation of the best fluoroscopic angulation in the CAT lab to help the interventionalist uh, to get the better visualization of all the lobes and uh, of the LIA anatomy. So, for instance, in this patient, it was a, a, a RAO with a bit of codal, and you can just, once you, you're happy with the angulation, you can display uh, the picture on the, on, the, on the screen in the CAT lab just as a reference plane for the interventionalist. And uh, during the procedures, you can make a comparison uh, of, uh, between the position of the device and uh, the position of uh, the two rings, uh, which are supposed to be the ideal position. So I'm going to show you uh, quickly an, an example. Here we are. So um, you have your early imaging and your delayed imaging. So you can scroll the data set to make sure that there is no thrombus and there is no thrombus in these patients. And you, 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 you're going to see how fast is the process to get the number. So you have to load the data. OK, here we are. And then you launch the LIA uh, uh, software. And you just have to click on Automatic. Here we are, and in a few seconds, you can get uh, a VRT view of your, L, of your LIA, and you can nicely see uh, the anatomy of the LIA. 
you can see the position of the LIA relative to the left upper pulmonary vein and uh, the pulmonary venous ridge. And you see that there is no uh, manual cropping, there is no uh, manual work, and you can directly obtain uh, this nice view of uh, the LIA. And if you, once you, you're happy with the, with the anatomy, you just have to click to confirm. And then you can start uh, the measurements, so you can just rotate to see the anatomy, you see all the different lobes, and you have to place a dot on the PV ridge and another one uh, which is supposed to be close to the circumflex artery. And in these patients, you see that uh, you cannot see the circumflex artery because if you look carefully, you see here the ostium of the, of the left main coronary artery, and you can follow the LAD, but you cannot see the circumflex artery because in these patients, if we go back for one second, the circumflex artery arises from the right coronary sinus with a posterior course, and I'm gonna show you quickly. So this is a, a hypoplastic circumflex artery that you can see here, and this artery gets a retroaortic pulmonary course, which means that you cannot see it clearly uh, on TE in the CAD lab, and you cannot use it at, a, at, an anatomic, at, at an anatomical landmark. But it doesn't matter in this case, you just have to put the two dots, and you go to next, and you can position the ideal landing zone. If you click here, you can get directly the numbers, all the numbers, and then you can position another ring at the level of the ostium. And one more time, you can get directly all the numbers. You can check on the VRT view the position, the ideal position of the device and the lobe and the disc relative to the left upper pulmonary vein. And then you can move to the next step, which is the last step, where you can check the final results of your CT planification. And you can evaluate the best uh, fluoro angulation. So if you do a bit of right anterior, you see that if you go to the cranial view, you cannot see all the lobes. But if you go to the caudal view, you can nicely see all the different lobes with the ideal position of the lobe and the discs. So this is what we do uh, before uh, starting the procedure in the CAT lab to get all the members in mind uh, for the sake of time. And uh, the faster you are in the CAT lab, uh, the safer you are for the patient. So in conclusion, uh, I would say that a detailed knowledge of the LAA anatomy and geometry and an accurate sizing of the landing zone uh, are crucial for the LAA percutaneous occlusion. And by providing 3D images with high spatial resolution, uh, the computed tomography enables uh, very accurate measurements. Uh, the three-dimensional workflow uh, is a fast and reliable tool to assess the uh, LAA shape and uh, uh, to measure the landing zone. The ring annotation uh, helps to visualize the size and the position of the lobe and the disc, and the integrated view and your view uh, can be very helpful for the, for the, for the interventionalist. And what are the future perspectives? Uh, I think that if you want to, um, to move towards the, um, the, the procedures uh, in non-sedated patients with the ice catheter, uh, the fusion of the CT and the ice catheter are, are very effective. Um, we've also developed uh, a new tool, uh, which is uh, an, angle, an angles measurement to measure the distance and the, the angles between the fossa valley and the landing zone to see whether uh, unusual uh, LAA orientation could be uh, associated with suboptimal uh, device implantations and potential more uh, residual uh, leaks. And there's an, another tool called the septal crossing tool, especially for uh, people working with the ice catheters, because if the, the ice images are not optimal, you can 
you can use this, uh, this CT tool to localize the fossa, the fossa ovale relative to the SVC and the aortic group to help uh, the transeptal puncture. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.